This is your election headquarters. I'm Marabu Kumisun. We uh, interrupt your regular programming to bring you news that's just coming in. And the news is that the president, uh, Nana Adudanko Kufuado, has responded formally to the resignation of Special Prosecutor Martin Amidu. Uh, a letter was just uh, released a while ago uh, from the presidency, and you see it there on your screens. I'll read through it. It says... This is to acknowledge receipt of your letter dated 16th November 2020, reference OSP slash 2 slash AM slash 14, addressed to the President of the Republic, conveying to him your decision to resign from office as Special Prosecutor, which he has accepted. The President has taken due note of the other matters raised in your letter, and the government will issue a statement responding to them in due course. The president has directed me to ensure that all emoluments and benefits due you under law are paid to you accordingly. The president thanks you for your service to the state and wishes you the best in your future endeavors. And it's signed by Chief of Staff, Honorable Akoswa Frema Ose Opare. Let me just quickly go through the letter again. It's a very short letter and it says, this is to acknowledge receipt of your letter dated 16 November 2020, addressed to the president of the republic conveying to him your decision to resign from office as special prosecutor, which he has accepted. The president has taken due note of the other matters raised in your letter, and the government will issue a statement responding to them in due course. The president has directed me to ensure that all emoluments and benefits due you under law are paid to you accordingly. The president thanks you for your service to the state and wishes you the best in your future endeavors. And it's signed by Chief of Staff, Honorable Akoswa Frema Ose Opare. So those were details of that letter released uh, just a few minutes ago. My colleague Winston Amwa, deputy head of our political desk, joins me. He's been following this uh, issue uh, thoroughly and uh, joins me with some um, perspective on this development that's just coming up. Now, we had earlier heard from the NPP uh, responding to Martin Amidu's uh, uh, claims of interference and the like. Uh, but there were calls for the presidency to speak to the matter. Now the presidency has issued a statement. They've accepted his resignation, uh, which some governance experts had actually advised that he, ha he shouldn't because it will impact negatively on his uh, anti-corruption agenda. But tell us, uh, just remind listeners and viewers, what were the other issues raised in Mr. Martin Amidu's letter? Because the letter makes reference to this, that in due course, the matters raised in Mr. Amidu's letter will be addressed by the president. Mm. Well, so about Mr. Martin Amidu, apart from resigning, talks about how uh, you know, there's been interference in his work. He's talked about you know, events from the uh, 23rd of uh, you know, October, when the president was in the Volta region, when he actually submitted the report on uh, the corruption risk assessment on the Japa uh, mineral transaction agreement. Now, following that particular meeting, the president, according to Mr. Amidu, had told him that you know, he should uh, you know, hold on for a week. He was going to deal with it. And Mr. Amidu tells the president in his resignation letter that, look, when the president made that particular decision, he, Martin Amidu, decided he was going to resign and he was no longer going to work under President Akufado. Now, that's one issue. He also raises issues about, you know, his conditions of service and emolument. And that's what they talk about. But he's also talked about his office, for yes. instance. Yeah. The fact that all this while he's been working in a three-bedroom and two-boys quarters office, and he thinks that his office has not been properly staffed. He's complained about it for a very long time. Nothing has been done about it. He's also talked about, you know, his staff members, for instance, they had been on secondment, and he's asked a question. Uh, he's actually made a comment. Nobody should ask him mm. about disciplining these persons. So these are some of the issues that Martin Amidu raises mm. in his, uh, you know, a resignation letter to the president. But, of course, in his own letter to uh, the public, he talks about events of, you know, 12th November, which actually... Um, that's when him. former President, President Rawlings died. died. Right. And he says his only I mean, source of protection was taken away. Mm -hmm. And that's culminating in his decision to resign also. Mm. That's interesting. And uh, we will be hearing from our presidential correspondent uh, because what we were told earlier was that the board for 
the Office of the Special Prosecutor had been meeting and the outcome of their meeting was what was going to inform what the president was going to say officially on this matter. But Winston is still here with me. Winston, um, the MPP issued a statement earlier today, you know, dismissing the claims by the special prosecutor of interference and all of that. Uh, tell us what they've been saying. Mm. Well, so the NPP, even before we get to the NPP letter, you know that in Martin Amidu's letter, he talks about how the president, uh, you know, gave him the response of Ken Oferiata, which he had wanted to be incorporated in his own investigation right. or in his risk assessment. Mm -hmm. And Mr. Martin Amidu has raised a question about the fact that, okay, so what was he really going to do with that? Because and in other letters he had talked about how, you know, at the time these, uh, on the 30th of October, when the finance minister was responding to these, he had not even made the report public. He had only sent a letter to the president. And so the NPP in issuing a statement actually talk about the fact that Mr. Martin Amidu as a lawyer should know that, you know, the rules of natural justice. Mm -hmm. And so if you have, uh, you know, done investigations or done an assessment of a deal and you think that certain persons may not have acted correctly, mm -hmm. it's important to hear from them. Mm -hmm. And so any attempt that says, look, can you just incorporate this into your report or look at this and determine whether or not there might be some changes that you make cannot amount to interference. And for the NPP, you know, President Akufado making that bold decision, making that bold choice of Martin Amidu, as special prosecutors, an indication of how well he was willing uh, to fight corruption. And they also say that, you know, uh, Mr. Martin Amidu loses the opportunity uh, to, you know, investigate uh, a criminal matter, according to the NPP, currently in front of them, right. uh, of the special prosecutor. That's the, uh, you know, Airbus saga where uh, government official one is alleged to have received about 5 million euros through an intermediary which Martin Amidi was investigating. Mm. And they thought that he should have, uh, you know, taken advantage of the opportunity, set up the agency, mm -hmm. and also investigate this particular issue. All right, Winston, stay with me because we have Elton Brobby, our presidential correspondent, joining us via phone. Elton, so earlier today we saw um, some memos from the presidency, um, obviously in response to claims that Mr. Martin Amidu had made about the fact that his office was under-resourced. But uh, we were looking forward to an official reaction to this resignation. What else have you been picking up? Well, for now, uh, apart from the two statements, what we are also waiting to hear or be given will be that detailed response from the president on the issues raised by Martin Amidu and what government has done so far since the establishment of the office of the special prosecutor. Uh, so what we have now are two statements. Uh, one is a response directly from the chief of staff acting on behalf of the president uh, to Mr. Martin Amidu, uh, accepting uh, his letter, announcing his resignation as special prosecutor, and the directive to ensure that all emoluments and benefits due him under the law are paid accordingly. And then the other statement, that is for the public, signed by uh, Mr. Eugene the director of communication at the presidency, also gave an indication that the president has taken note of the resignation from office of the special prosecutor, Mr. Martin Abidu, uh, by the letter dated 16th November 2020. And president Kufado has also taken due note of the other matters raised by the special prosecutor and letter of resignation. And in the next uh, uh, hours to follow, the president will issue a detailed response uh, on the matters raised by Martin Amidu. By the meantime, I have directed the chief of staff to contact Mr. Amidu to resolve all outstanding matters uh, regarding the resignation. And then uh, the president also wishes him well. So these are the two official uh, communications from the president, one to Mr. Martin Amidu and the other one to the public. The next we are all waiting to uh, get from the president will be that detailed response to Mr. Mr. Martin Amidu, uh, cataloging what government said that they have done and I have a fair idea of some of the things that will be contained in this statement based on some of the memos and uh, confidential documents that already is in the, is in the public domain, you know, circulating. So however, that's what we're all waiting uh, uh, to hear or get as far as the next leg of this uh, development story is concerned. And Elton, earlier I referenced the memos that uh, we saw earlier today from the presidency responding to Mr. Martin Amidu's claims that his office had been under-resourced. Uh, run us through those memos and what specifically uh, they were speaking to. Okay, so the ones we have so far include a letter that is dated 14th September 2020. And this is a letter Mr. Martin Amidu sent to the uh, Chief of Staff's office. Now let me read some of the uh, 
portions in the letter. He says that I reminded you that there have been several correspondence with the Office of the Chief of Staff and your office on how to proceed to ensure uh, uh, how to proceed to ensure that the proper conversion, equipping, and furnishing of the premises into a suitable office accommodation for occupation to enable the requested staff to be employed to operationalize the office as envisaged under Act 595 establishing the office. You also recall that in about March or April 2019, you personally brought a bunch of keys to hand over to me, allegedly for the same building. We are talking about a nine-story building originally occupied by the captain but was given to the special prosecutor by government for its operation. He says that I was at pain to explain to you how it was procedurally and technically not feasible for me to just accept keys to a building without any due process having taken place. You came again the next day with Deputy Chief of Staff, and I carefully explained to both of you the state of the building and requested you to visit the place and to take inventory of the suitability of the physical structure for occupation. And then the, the, the Martin Abidu's uh, correspondence to the Chief of Staff ends by saying that the problem with your office is the assumption being made that every Ghanaian who has agreed to assist the President to achieve this objective is under a contract or servitude to be ordered about without a courtesy of any engagement in consultation. I have trained myself to be ready, able, and willing to revert to my retirement without consider anybody attempting to treat me as being under a contract of servitude. I instructed my secretary not to take possession of the bunch of keys disrespectfully sent to my office in an envelope through a messenger and to ask the messenger to return them to the center. I was informed that you had sent the messenger. It requires that I explain my position to you as I have done. And this is uh, the letter Mr. Amidu wrote to the chief of staff. And the chief of staff, in a response to this issue about the handing over of keys to the nine-story building uh, to be used, as office for the special prosecutor also says uh, that I wish to explain that there was no ill motive behind our decision to send the keys to you to the building to you. Rather, as you indicated in your letter, uh, and, 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 and give the reference to this particular letter, this office has, has far advanced in the process of seeking approval of the PPA. Whenever it begins the process to award the sole source contract for the conversion of the whole premises into suitable office accommodation and division. We deem it right and appropriate to give you possession and unfettered access to the building after Get Fund had certified completion of the identified defects. This was indeed the reason we sent the letter and the accompanying keys to you on September 11, 2020, which was unfortunately rejected. You may respectfully wish to consider your decision, and this is the response that the Chief of Staff uh, uh, you know, uh, tends to be somewhat ambiguous. There's also a memo uh, from the chief of staff, uh, from the acting chief director at the Jubilee House, to the chief of staff, also copied to the special prosecutor. And the catalogs and a number of issues that had been discussed between the three parties, including the the, 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 the issue of salary and the monuments and the recruitment of staff. And uh, briefly, let me briefly let me touch on the matter All of right. the Go salary ahead. as captured in this memo to Mr. Martin uh, Amidu, uh, which was sent by the chief director at the uh, presidency. And about, he says that on a matter of salary, the Ministry of Finance in the 2020 budget made provision for compensation budget for that office to employ and pay his staff. It may be true that the special prosecutor had not been paid his salary since he took office. However, be that as the problem should not be attributed to this office. It is the responsibility of the Office of the Special Prosecutor to set up its own management unit to manage the budget for compensations and payroll activities of its employees since the OSP is an autonomous entity. The office has no direct obligation to be involved in salary matters unless the Office of the Special Prosecutor seeks the assistance or advice from the office in that regard. However, when it came to the attention of the human resource directors of this office, the special prosecutor and the deputy special prosecutor had accepted the appointment. We quickly contacted the controller and accountant general staff at the office of the special prosecutor to discuss with the special prosecutor the process for payment of the salaries of the two officers. In view of the above and many other efforts, this office had made to get the office of the special prosecutor operational, but which have so far not been appreciated. And this is signed by H.M. Wood. Uh, and he... In this sense, it was hopeful that they would come to a resolution 
on this matter, but it doesn't look like it, it, they were resolved, mm. probably leading to Mr. Ahmed attending his resignation yesterday. And this memo I read to you is dated 18th August 2020. So the matters have persisted for long, right. and uh, the last straw was probably the events of 12 November 2020, in which Mr. Martin Ahmed makes reference in his resignation letter. Right. Many thanks. Uh, that's presidential correspondent Elton John Brobe uh, with that update from the presidency. And stay with us. We'll be delving more into this uh, on polls when Gifty and Apia takes over from me. But Winston is still here with me. You heard Elton there uh, running through the memo that sort of proves that uh, the presidency had actually resourced Ms. Amidu's office. But Ms. Amidu makes the point that he doesn't have human resource, which is critical for his work. Exactly. And, you know, Mr. Martin Amidu in his uh, resignation had, and in some of his correspondence with government had talked about the fact that, you know, he had non-commissioned detectives. I mean, that's policemen as detectives. Uh, you know, he had an inspector as acting head of investigations. Now, for Mr. Martin Amidu, you know, in one of his uh, letters on uh, Shraj, for instance, uh, he talks about the fact that, you know, when it comes to the investigation of uh, ABAJ, that's the former CEO of the Public Procurement Authority, his team that was supposed to liaise with the audit servers. Now, the audit service decided not to work with them because the audit service says when they met the team, the team told them that this was a case that they could make a lot of money. And his investigations had proven that one of his staff members was actually const in constant touch with the lawyer of ABAJ. He said the issue that, look, these persons who are on secondment to my office are not the best of resources available to me. If you really want us to do the work as stipulated in the act, then you need to resource us, give us the people with a lot of expertise in investigation so they can do that. And you, you, you've heard from that particular letter, his issue about the office building, they wanted to give him the old get fund uh, building and the back and forth, Mr. Martin I mean, you wanting it to be renovated, you know, to specifications that would suit the office of a sp uh, special prosecutor. And that wasn't done until he eventually turned in his, his resignation. All right, many thanks, uh, Winston Amwa. Winston is deputy head of our political desk here at Joy News, and that's how we wrap it up. But do stay tuned in to your election headquarters because we'll have more for you on this uh, evolving matter uh, on the pulse when Gifty Andwapia joins you after this break.